Bro, do you believe in past lives? Me personally, I do. And look, look, look. We're about to watch a video where kids remember their past lives. Ooh, this is about to be interesting. Shout out to the gang. We're going to see what these little kids talking about. Maybe they're all a little cuckoo. Who knows? Let's go. Good Dark Knight Gang, I'm Neptune. Hey bro, today I'm about to do another video from Most Amazing Top 10. This one right here is titled, Top 10 Kids Who Remembered Their Past Life. Y'all requested it, don't trip me not. Got y'all, this sounds fire, man. Do you believe in past lives? Do you believe in reincarnation? Me, per me personally, bro, I do. I believe in past lives, I believe in reincarnation. I believe when you die, if you didn't learn the lessons that you needed to learn, you will be reincarnated. Actually, I believe you have a choice. I believe when you die, you can go to quote unquote heaven, which is just being reunited with the ultimate creator, what which we call God. You know what I'm saying? Ultimate creator, ultimate consciousness, energy, whatever you want to call it. You can either be reunited back with that, but you'll cease to exist or you can be reincarnated so your soul can continue to grow. That's what I believe personally, but we all believe differently. So anyway, with that being said, I do believe in past lives. We're about to hop into this video. Shout out to the gang. Let me know if you believe in past lives or not. But yeah, man, we're going to see top 10 kids who remember their past lives. This should be interesting. Shout out to the gang. Let's Go. Children honestly have a mind of their own. Like, sometimes they don't even have a filter. They just say what's on their mind, which results in them saying hilarious things or even quite strange and unnerving things. But would you believe your kid if they started talking about their past life? About living somewhere else with another family? Or would you just say that they had a wild imagination? Hey, hi, hmm. hello, what's up, what's going on, I and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Hope y'all are doing good. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 kids who remember their past lives. Now let me start this video by saying that researcher Jim B. Tucker believes that usually between the ages of two to six, when the children are still developing, that's when it's said that they will begin to make claims about their past lives. After that, it may be harder because then a child's brain begins to mature and any early memories that they may have are harder to access. Starting off at number 10, we have the Russian kindergartner. Now, this story surrounds a girl who was Russian in her past life. Her mother claims that when her daughter was learning the alphabet, she kept mixing up her letters. She would mix up her B's and V's and H's and N's. These letters aren't okay. that similar, so it left her and her teacher confused, especially since her daughter kept saying, I don't remember those. This little girl then states that she remembers the letter H and that it makes an N sound. Then she said that she knew more letters and began to write out the Russian alphabet. Her mom asked her where she learned that and she TV. said, Vlad taught me before he disappeared and not Vlad the vampire. This little girl claimed that Vlad was her brother in her past life. How freaky! Like there's no that way that this young creepy, girl bro. just happened to know the Russian alphabet. Unless it was from her past life. <laughs> what do you think about that one? Would you believe your daughter? Talking about, oh, Vlad taught me. He was my brother in the past life. I'll be like, man, you crazy. We going to the doctor. <laughs> Put my daughter on some meds. No, nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let me stop playing. I'm not even going to play like that. <laughs> At number nine, we have the daughter who just wants to go home. Okay. This mother claims that when her daughter was young, she kept begging her mom to take her home. When she asked where her home was, she said that she used to live near the water with her other family. That That's was until beautiful. one day she passed away. She would even draw pictures of her past home and retell memories of her watching the waves. She also refers to her mom as Pa and wants to go back home to her other Mahi. Moving on to number eight, okay. we have The Boy and the Scottish Pub. Just like the title suggests, this story takes place in a pub in Scotland. When a four-year-old and his family stopped at a pub in a small village in Cairngorms, the little boy recognized the pub immediately and said, 
My favorite place! The boy was able to direct his dad to the bathroom in the pub, which was said to be hidden behind a wall and not even labeled. Then the little boy okay. kept saying how much he loved this pub and sitting beside the fire. But there was no fireplace. But the boy insisted that there used to be one against a certain wall. Then he continued to talk about more details of the pub and about the owner and his friend Fred. The bar staff then said that his claims were correct. Fred was the owner there, but passed away 10 years ago. Oh, okay, snap. wow. Either this kid has been sneaking out and partying it up at this pub, or nah. he truly did go there in yeah, his past life. That's crazy. Moving on to number in his past life, he really was at that pub. Oh, Number seven, lit. we have the boy who is his own grandfather. Okay. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Okay. This boy claims to be the. This is some Rothschild Illuminati type ish. <laughs> they trying to figure out how to reincarnate back into the same family. Reincarnation what? of his grandfather. A year before Gus Taylor was born, his grandfather had passed away. However, when the baby was 18 months, he started referring to himself as his own grandfather, Grandpa Augie. When he was four, he could point out his grandpa in photographs, despite never even seeing him before. Gus would also talk about his sister. Now, the grandfather's sister had been murdered and they always kept that from Gus, but somehow he already knew this detail and would continuously talk about his past sister. Creepy. And also super confusing. So the grandfather was the dad to Gus's mom, but his mom gave birth to her dad, the grandfather? That's so weird. Next up at number six, we have Cameron McCauley. It's not that weird. The grandfather passed away. He was reincarnated back into the same family. Now there is a short little documentary on Cameron in case you are wondering and want to check it out as well. So basically okay, when Cameron was two years old, he kept saying that he had another life on a remote island called Bara. Now Cameron was from Glasgow, but Bara is an hour flight away, approximately 220 miles from Glasgow. For three years, Cameron kept talking about his family in Bara. He said he had brothers and sisters and even had a black and white sheepdog. He said he remembers living in a white house near the beach and remembers planes landing nearby. He even remembers the view outside from his house's window. Cameron began missing his family so much that he would become super upset. That's when they ended up going to Bara to find his home. When they did find his home, it had the same view that Cameron described and was apparently even home to the same dog. However, Cameron said he had a father named Shane Robertson that passed away from getting hit in a car. This is the one thing that doesn't check out. Apparently okay. there was never a Shane Robertson that lived there, so... Who's Shane? Honestly, maybe it was his father from like two lives ago. Who even knows? We are now at our top. Nah, Cameron. You don't know what you're talking about, boy. Halfway mark with Shanti Devi. Shanti Devi was born in 1926 in India. When okay. she was four years old, she started making claims about her real name, her other family, and her past life. Apparently, she told her parents that she lived 145 kilometers away in a place called Mathura with her husband, Kadar Nath. She also said that she that died like after beautiful. giving birth to her child. Apparently, she even had the same talking habits as someone from Mathura. Her family eventually took her to the other village and found the man she claimed to be her husband by the name of Kadar Nath. Kadar then told them that he did lose his wife nine years ago, 10 days after delivering their son. Now, Kadar was skeptical of this girl's claims, so when he went to go meet Shanti, he pretended to just be his brother. But Shanti instantly recognized him as her husband from her past life. Next on my list at- Okay, now that's kinda creepy. You gotta believe that one. You gotta believe that one. Number four, we have- A young girl saying, I know this is my husband. I know this was my husband. And he's all like, uh, yo, this is crazy, man. Reincarnation, bro. It's real. Have James Layanger. Born in 1998, when James was two, he claimed to be a lieutenant and passed away when his plane was shot down. Now, just like mm -hmm. any other parent would do, they just brushed it aside, saying that he had a wild imagination. But then he kept describing accurate information. When they researched into this plane crash, they found that there was an American pilot named Lieutenant James Houston Jr. who passed away in 1945 towards the end of World War II. First off, what are the odds that he gets reincarnated and his 
his parents literally picked the same name. Mm -hmm. Now, the boy continued to talk about his ship, the Natoma, which was also true. He would also oh, have reoccurring sorry. nightmares about an airplane crash. His parents then met Lieutenant James's crew, who are all old by now, I'm but sure. they confirmed the details that James mentioned, saying that they were all accurate and only the lieutenant and the crew could have known some of the details. Coming in at number three. All right, all right, y'all know me. I try to be a skeptic sometimes. That little boy could have easily read up on stuff or his parents could have read up on stuff and it told him what to say. Who knows? But the coincidences, bro, this is, this is why I believe reincarnation is real. Have Edward Austrian. Edward Austrian was four years old when he claimed that he was a soldier from World War I. He kept saying At that he passed away after taking a bullet to the throat. In fact, Edward continuously would get sore throats and would say that his shot wound was hurting. Doctors couldn't even explain why he was constantly getting these sore throats. And in fact, he even developed a cyst in his throat at one point. Eventually, the cyst mysteriously went away on its own after Edward started talking more about his past life. He claims that he was a soldier named James that was 18 years old. He has vivid memories from his past life that he would share with his family. One day he said, and I quote, we were walking along through the mud. It was damp, it was cold. My rifle is heavy. I remember looking out and seeing trees and then there was desolation. I heard a shot come from behind. It went through someone else, hit me square in the back of the neck and I felt my throat fill with blood. There's no yeah. way a four year old could have yeah. made up those details. Yeah. Especially since his parents claim that they've never let him watch any soldier or war related movies or shows. Next up at number two, we have the boy from Thailand. Right, Chennai was three years old when he started having memories of his past life. This three year old boy <clears throat> remembers being a teacher named Bua Kai. He talked about his previous family, wife, and children. He said that he passed away after being shot in the head while walking to school. What's freaky is that this boy has two birthmarks on his face. What one he on he the back shot? of his head and one above his left eye. Okay. Those are the exact spots where the bullet entered and exited Buakai's head. Now, people believe that birthmarks tell some sort of story from our past lives. In this case, it symbolizes how he was killed in his past. Now, Buakai was a real person that passed away about five years before Chennai was born. Coming in at number one, we have the boy who solved his own murder. Okay, when a boy in Syria Golden up. Heights was three, he began saying that he had been murdered in his past life. The uh -huh. boy said that he was killed by getting an axe to his head. This boy even had a long red birthmark on his head. In this boy's case, the birthmark also showed the way that he passed away. Now, it turns out that this boy's story checked out. They took him to the village that he said he once lived in and even showed his family where his body was buried. When they unearthed his body, they found a boy's skeleton with an axe wound in the skeleton's Yo, skull. Like, there's no the way that a kid could have just known where yeah. the body was buried yeah. by coincidence. That's but crazy. it doesn't stop there. The kid also remembered who the killer was and his full name. They then confronted him and he eventually admitted to the crime. Right. Bro, great video. Crazy video, insane video. That's why I told you guys I believe in reincarnation, man. It's too many instances like that. And uh, look, that made me want to do some more research tonight, cuz <laughs> that was interesting. How how else can you explain these kids knowing this? How else? Especially number one. He knew how he was murdered. He said, bro, somebody hit me with an axe in my head. I can show you where it happened. I can show you where they buried me. Unless the person that died, their ghosts came and told this kid that, there's no way that this kid could have known that, bro reincarnation shout out to the gang everybody have a great day i'm gonna see y'all next time yo yo peace